I am unashamed. What about you? You know, yesterday them boys came and filmed. They had enough equipment. They had way more than any show I've ever done in my life. Oh, we're Restoration Productions is oh. cutting edge, son. We're we're we ain't one at a time, and we mass communicate. So, Jace, so, how many times a week is this? Well, here's what. No, we. I'm not doing a show yet. Here's what happened. Zach, who's been a guest, who's our cousin, He's your my, nephew, my business partner. Yeah, they uh, see what the deal is. They're always wanting to get back on TV. Now, you notice who's, I'm saying who's they? That that that's that <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who's they? <laughs> because Zach and Al, you know, have a production company. That's so right. they're like, hey, Jace, let's let's get back on TV. So, you know, I got into metal. Because we can't make any money unless That's we're it. producing something so, that people are watching. That's I mean, look, works. I hate to say this because I know we have a lot of Duck Dynasty fans that listen to our podcast. I didn't want to be on TV. It just kind of happened. <laughs> I was the one over there saying – don't do this. Now, granted, was I wrong? And, you know, was the blessings that came from it awesome? But to tell you the truth, I was perfectly fine. Willie was the conductor of that train. Yeah, without it. Because well, he's never met a camera he didn't like. If y'all remember, when they pitched it, <laughs> and, and we, we talked, and I held up my Bible, and I said, y'all going to film this too? And they said, whatever y'all do, Mr. Robson, that's what we're going to do. I said, well, that didn't so, turn out to be exactly well, accurate. Uh, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> so they leave. Uh, 90% of the spiritual things I had to say on that were cut out. <laughs> but 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 when they left, y'all said, Dad, what do you think? And I said, I don't think America will watch a bunch of rednecks shooting ducks. Okay. I just don't think they're going to watch well, that. I said, however. They didn't shoot ducks. I we, said, we did, but they didn't I shoot I know it. it, but I said, however, I had a little <laughs> misconception of what they want. I said, if God is behind it, what if he's behind it? And it'll be a way f- to give us a platform to get the gospel preached. I said, if he's behind it, I said, it'll go ballistic. I said, that's all I have you to You got say. that from, was it Gamaliel? Is that how you say his name? Gamaliel. 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 Yeah. Where's that at? We need to find that. That I use that verse all the time. In Acts, Acts. By the way, we have Jeff here today. Welcome, here. Jeff, youngest brother. Thanks for all having the way from me. Texas. Always you know what's here. weird is you don't know what I'm fixed to say, and they don't either. But I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Woo! Because I, while Al's looking up Gamaliel, because that's a good strategy for any venture that you're going on in life. What his conclusion was is is very good, but. We were we did a uh, I don't know what they call them what do they call it a sizzle we sizzle did, reel Jeff and I yesterday you have to shoot footage I have, a lot of footage to then condense it down to a three minute sizzle and I have breaking news most of the time we, we've Since done it seems kind of like uh, you walking around looking down at a metal detector walking across the ground <laughs> it seems like to me it'd be like kind of like a long baseball game. In other words, can you actually hold the audience? All right, and well, that's you, why I was going to bring this up. Here's my you, question Jeff today. looking at a metal detector. Oh, look, I found a ring. I mean, Because, look, here's what all these production people in Hollywood, they always keep this stuff secret. And, look, I've filmed many sizzles. You have to, about various shows. We just happened, Duck Dynasty happened to hit, and there it was. And so they always tell you never bring this up. But I wanted to appeal to our – have we come up with a name for uh, our people? Well, Unashamed we Nation is the one that's been the most popular. The Unashamed, the unashamed nation. nation. Then you have, uh, I like the one that was Allies. What was it? Allied uh, Nation. Yeah. Allied. Una, unashamed unashamed allies. allies. That's pretty good. And then I think the the funny one is those who subscribe to Phil's uh, ball peen hammer approach. <laughs> The Philistines, the Philistines, which was what Willie came up with. I have gone over and beyond uh, <laughs> myself to try to keep things without repeated rants. But every once in a while, you need a good Paul, rant. Even the Apostle Paul, Jude, Second uh, Peter. Mm-hmm. At times, Al, would you say they they 
Oh yeah, they I were mean, given the rant. Stephen, need... Stephen in the Book of Acts, he pretty that well. That was a pretty good rant. I so mean, let me. Jesus, 5, Jesus Acts called 5, a group of individuals. You brood of vipers. So did John the Baptist. So I'm just saying. I don't say you bunch of snakes. I, I don't say that. Well, for everybody who says Jay's quit telling long stories and let's get into the Bible. Oh, Gamaliel, I have trouble saying this. Hey, look, Gamaliel. He, I, I listen, w- listen, what he Jay's, said. Uh, look yeah. carefully. Look, look, Gamaliel. Your accent is second. Gamaliel. Can we? Can you come up with a nickname? <laughs> Gammy. That, G-Man. 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 Is that sacrilegious? Well, he said uh, he was a Pharisee. It's all right. We make fun. Okay, what he said was he said he said you know they had a situation coming up about fighting the uh, followers of Jesus, and he said he said this in verse thirty eight of chapter five. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you leave these men alone. Now, these were the followers of Jesus, right. but listen to his logic. Let them go. For here is the part I want to get at. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. I love that statement. Mm-hmm. But if statement. but if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. I didn't realize it at the time, but when the Duck Dynasty came forward, you were that, you were quoting Gamaliel. I was promoting promote. Uh, <laughs> I was quoting Gamaliel, but didn't know it. That's right. I said, if, I yeah. don't think it'll work. Well, I he said, did train I said, the but. Apostle Paul, so he was a pretty well, good Well, see, thinker. that's why y'all invited me as a guest on your podcast, and I never left. <laughs> so <laughs> that's actually how I got here. It is. I came as a guest. And it's kind of like the You're... guy you invite over <laughs> for a meal. And he just never leaves. He just like, You've had that happen your okay, whole life. We're you know? yawning, we're wondering, and it's just like, no, he's <laughs> feel like y'all can do what you want to, but I'm going to bed. <laughs> no, you're like you're Rebecca. So Rebecca was an exchange student, which yeah. exchange students, they come one year and then they go home. She came back a second year and then she never left. <laughs> She's still on the property. Now she has a husband, a baby. It's just like the well, people student. ask me that. They say, Well, how come your name's not on the podcast? I get when I go to events and I'm like because I'm just a guest. <laughs> and they're like, you're but you're on the- there every time. I was like, yeah, I'm the guest that never <laughs> left, and nobody wants to hurt my feelings. <laughs> so what, what I'm telling you is usually they tell you keep these sizzles on the hush-hush, and I'm like, I want to appeal to Unashamed Nation. If you think that Jeff and I should do this, I will pursue it. I don't really want to do it. One of my That'd hobbies. That would be pretty cool. Get their input. Well, here's what I told them. Would that, they watch it? Yeah, I don't know. So here's so here's the, the premise. Let me explain the premise. And I have Jeff here, so because yesterday we did this. And what you do, in the, and by the way, Jeff is is not only was he a reality TV personality on Duck Dynasty, but he and Jessica had their own show. So you're you're a multiple. Did you? Yeah, they had two yeah. seasons of you didn't their watch own. Watch it. <laughs> I'm so rude. Sorry, buddy. How rude. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't watch TV. It was growing the dynasty. Yeah. I watched it. I was a fan, yeah. Jeff. I was on your show. Are you offended that I didn't watch that? No, I'm not surprised at all. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. See, you don't you have to. expect no, no We're more. not cookie cutter people here. <laughs> so here's the premise of it is I got this old place, 17, 98, 98 when they first got the land. I acquired it. I bought it. And we turned it into a. Uh, you wanted to make sure you didn't get in a poker game. You kind of, yeah, yeah, you bought it. I've got some stuff in a poker <laughs> game, before, but not a house. <laughs> but uh, so we, we. I'm sure I offended everyone. Poker mm. is not gambling. Oh boy, it here is we a go. skill set. <laughs> okay. Anyway, stock market is gambling. Well, poker is no, no. There skills. you go. There you and. Go. So why, not make it, why not make it simple? Out of all the lists and rather long ones, list of sins, oh I will give you credit, Jace. I've never read in there where gambling is a sin. But not this once. makes religious people feel so uncomfortable. Yeah, Every time we talk about this, and you know what? That's why I like it. Oh, if it was a sin, the Almighty would have said. He would have spelled it out. He would have spelled he it out. He would have said, do not play cards for money. <laughs> That's right. right in there. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. But obvious. Al, it goes back to our last podcast in John six. The people have that they can't help it. What must I do, John six? What must I do for the work that God requires? requires. That's how people 
in the religious world think. And look, it makes people who are not in Jesus, it makes them nauseated yeah. because it's so Feels like a hypocrite. Yeah. yeah. It, they missed it. They missed Jesus, missed the grace, missed lifestyle. But anyway, that's for a different time. Oh, words, right now, Jace, you would have a hard time. <laughs> Jeff, you're in Austin, Texas. I mean, by the way, you're in the danger zone, son. <laughs> that's the migrants from California. And uh, you, you, you're like, okay, here we go. Well, they need Jesus just like everybody else. Jeff, what you've got to convince them when you're walking down the road <laughs> is that you're a priest of the Most High. Now, when Jace would try that, because you look at Jace, she's like, they look at Al, and I say, possible? If, does he have a tall hat of some kind? But <laughs> but they look at me and say, not a priest of the Most High. No way, no way, no way he's a priest. I could do the No, E-pop. most people. We in- just don't have the trappings, the theological, wherever thought. No, I think you're, overthink- you're overthinking it. Today in our culture, when somebody says he's a priest, he has a black suit with a white, or is it the other way around? Black no, it's suit, a black suit collar. with a white collar. They're like, oh, you must be a priest. Or I saw one. There was one the other day. I was flying finally to Tulsa, and he had the black thing, but then he had a really cool looking robe over that. But he was just flowing through the airport. Well, what I'm like, saying is, that I, that's how deep our percept. You're going. Well, you're overthinking it. If if you go buy a black suit with a white collar and put it on. Of course, you'd have to. Yeah, you'd never trimming. seen your white collar underneath. People would say that that is the the craziest <laughs> looking priest I've ever seen, <laughs> or they'd think that you robbed a priest and stole his clothes. That's probably <laughs> that's what, probably the more accurate. <laughs> so, so you're so, saying clothes <laughs> does not make the man? <laughs> no, but in our culture, they think it. Uh, if you wear that, they assume you're a priest. I it, read these texts in James about not being unkind to people of low position with not proper clothing james actually makes a point of that said you know the ones that come in all spiffed up you know Mm -hmm. you got them over there on the front there in the front row well that's the way people (laughs) all the rest of these there's a lot of that too much of that goes on we need to get well let's be in the church i I would hope you people would say we ought not do that you realize how many events i've gone to because like the an event they'll hire me and there's not most of them are not church events and they're like swanky things and I'm the speaker. Well, I wear what I wear. I am who I am. And they don't mind. I wear my camouflage. Yeah. The problem is, if we go to a dinner afterwards at a restaurant, they won't let me in. <laughs> I was the guest of the hour, the speaker. I'm and the You're action. not allowed in the building. They're like, this fella cannot come in. They're like, he's our guest of honor. They're like, well, get him a coat, a jacket. And I have to buy, I have to borrow someone's jacket and tie to put on my Skanky so camouflage. You, you've opened up a little box there. So, uh oh. So, what is. I'm the, trying to get back to this well, TV hang show. Hang on to your thoughts. So, what is, the, what is actually just the clothes on a man makes him a man? What are certain uh, well, standards? The mindset has always been that we want, here's what they think. So, we want to bring our best to God. So, if we're going to bring our best to God, again, it's back to this idea of the temple and the place, then we certainly want to look our best. Oh yeah, and so that's where the old I've dress had, up. I've had religious people rebuke me. It's not a biblical thought. It's just a but the guy, my attire. the guy who was appointed, even going all the way back to the prophet saying he's coming, the forerunner of Jesus. Let's see, he's he's running down grasshoppers and robbing beehives <laughs> to survive, and when this dude steps up out of the wilderness, he's the one paving the way. And he's wearing camel skin. Why would you? Why would you take that kind of person to pave the way for you if clothes meant uh, anything? It's a good I'm point. just just a thought. It's a point. It's a point. Well, Phil, I like John it. the Baptist made us put us to shame. This dude was camped out. <laughs> no, he didn't put the, you to shame. No, he, you're y'all right, right that y'all were. Yeah, you're blood brothers. Let's take a break. So part of the. Um, coronavirus, I guess for everybody but you, Dad, has pushed people to their computers for work. You know, now they got, you You know, you're. it's like you're at the office, but you're not. You're at home on your computer, but you're being beamed somewhere else like you're there. You've done a few, like, interviews. I do, I do a lot of interviews yeah. with people I've never met so that's what. So people, like you doing interviews about the book and stuff like that, people are... That's their whole life now is working. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah, now, a lot of companies 
all their employees work because it's software companies and you just they just work. In fact, them. a lot of them are going to save money going forward because you know now they're just going to stay at home, which is you know mm-hmm. I guess good good and bad. Well, one of the one of the bad things that's happened as a result of that is there's a new cyber crime, which is home title theft, that's kind of cropped up out of this more people being on the computer. You're also more open to the criminal element, you know, mostly from other countries, but, you know, I'm sure there's some here too. They basically are trying to figure out how to steal what they can from you or your bank or whatever. Yeah, any they're, they're calling me up out of the blue saying, what do you want? Yeah, I know, exactly. I'm like, nothing. <laughs> Oh. That's right. It'd so, be like I've always envisioned someone coming into your house and saying, "This is somebody our house. had called him from my number <laughs> and said, here's that's, what, that's still trying to and figure give that him out.' Some kind of pitch, and then he would call me up, and I said, "Well, yeah." So that, however, that's what you get for answering the phone. That's, yeah. that's right. They Bad move. So, so there's a company that on this uh, home title theft called Home Title Lock. And we talked about them before. And basically, they protect your legal title because the legal title of your home is usually not in your home. It's at a bank. It's in a, somewhere digitally uh, being kept. So there have been people that actually lost their home because these people borrowed money against it. It's terrible. So anyway, we want you to put that barrier around it. And the way you do that is go to HomeTitleLock.com. So you register your address. Make sure you're not already a victim. If you use the code FILL, you get 30 days of free protection. Uh, which would be great. So it's uh, HomeTitleLock.com. Feel is your code. Check them out. So here's what I'd like to do. Al, let, let's do this. You know, Jeff and I were – and you actually found something on my place. Can Jeff really speak awesome. at his age now? Because he's never spoken a word yet. Can, can, <laughs> can he get in on <laughs> – as the guest okay. of this podcast, look, if you want to say something, Jeff, you have to interrupt. I got you. Look, we, the only meeting we've had in 130 podcasts is we said, let's agree to interrupt each other. We have to. So, Which is the rule of the Robertsons anyway, we know. So, it. Jeff, you talk about what we're, we're doing. Do you, what's your take on this? I think it's really cool. And who you didn't talk about was Mr. Murray. I was getting to him, but go He's ahead. He's been an old friend of ours forever, and he is an expert in yeah. Detecting. So we, so we have an expert. I remember yeah. him because he, I brought him to the Lord. We have a legitimate. Now, here's the way I describe because all they did was ask us questions yesterday. You know, Zach was like, he's the thinker. He, and so I said, I'm I'm the hunter. I I like this. I mean, I like history, I, but I like. Watch the, the audience <laughs> going to see. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm the hunter. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, they is, don't care about hunting. <laughs> What yeah, are they, they going to see? He always a hunter. Great. <laughs> well, what are y'all going to be doing so people will tune in and Dad's, watch you? I don't think Dad's going to beat the audience here. Okay, I, look. I, I, t- I think he's missing out on the, the we're, concept. We're metal de- when you metal to say you find relics and coins and, and things of value or things that are cool. But I was, I was telling you why I do it because I think it's important. Because it represents a segment of people who metal detect. See, Jelp is like, he likes the treasure the money. Jeff thinks he's going to find something and then retire because of what he found. Not that, That's not necessarily. That's pretty much <laughs> it. I mean, you know that, I mean? Is, that would be cool. Well, I, told, oh, see, see, I, I told you about Jeff. So the last time Jeff was in town, he's digging in mom's coin thing. Of course, my, and it's nasty because mom just uh, spilled Coke in there and everything's just glued to the middle of her console. And I was like, he's just like dripping through. I said, Jeff, what are you doing? He said, Oh, there's a pile of coins here. I'm just looking through here. But one time I Rare found coins. a yeah, yeah. One time right. I found a 1941. And but I was see, like, so yours? He's searching like in people's see, cars. And see, houses. I wouldn't do that because my <laughs> that's, that's the low hanging fruit. <laughs> I was trying to explain it to Phil. My motivation <laughs> is the hunt. That's not hunting now. So how do this you know where to? Up how do you know where to coins. look? How do you know where to look? Well, you get you you do it, and this would be how the show. This is what I'm thinking. Because a lot of I other people do, may get into this. Look, if if the if unashamed nation disagrees with this, well, we'll just call it. But if y'all think it's a good idea, so if our it, audience will decide whether this show need, ever gets made or not. Let's get Zach's social media stuff because I don't want you telling me. <laughs> I'm not going to read it. That's right. So what is Zach's hand? Can somebody find that? Find that and, uh, out. Let, let's and and I want everybody to go to Zach and say, "Here's what you do," <laughs> right. or this won't work. 
Or and he'll tell us. And don't do a long thing. Just give us a yes. Well, maybe. Or no. By the way, while I'm there, has this ever uh, a film about? Because they have a lot of people doing a lot of wild stuff. You know, in the middle of nowhere, and I'm survival. But naked. Uh, and has afraid. this particular endeavor of filming people? You know, with the with the with the metal detector going. Across, I'm sure has this ever has. been done before? I don't, I don't yeah. watch TV. I think I there know. was a show um, on a bigger discovery or history. Was it? It didn't last long, I don't think. But that's what you I'm know saying. why. This because, may not work. No, you need somebody needs to be nude. So you have to have a naked. Feature. We're out on that. No, no you're not. Right. Tell no, me that's no. that's the only thing. Well, that, that seems to be pie. If one of you is stripped down, here was my idea. Here was my idea. What I wanted to do for the show is because I, I don't, contrary to what people say, I know nothing but myself. So like in Duck Dynasty, that was basically. Now, granted, they edited out every time it got real spiritual. Or we talked about Jesus, you know, and that, you know, they had they owned the show. We were just on it. So it just could, made them nervous. All right. Them. But I told them, I was like, look, I, there's a lot of parallels to metal detecting, and I th- see things, you know, in faith in Jesus. And I was telling Zach yesterday when he interviewed me, I mean, he was like, I was like, just, just you realize that God knew this was fun. And here's why in Luke 15, when he tells the story, the three stories of why he was eating lunch with tax collectors and sinners, he tells three stories. Shepherd loses a sheep. He goes find. He finds it, and what happens? Joy. The whole thing's really about joy. He's looking for the one, and and That's although right. you got ninety nine more, you're more proud if you found the one. And look, one. it causes joy where in heaven and on earth. There's a party on earth. And there's a party in heaven. Jace, I must admit, son, I've never put that together. Well, <laughs> see, that's why I never left. So the <laughs> second story here. is a woman who lost a coin. Now, why in the world would the creator of the cosmos of all the things that he could come up with that causes joy, he brings up what we do? So you I know, was, I, was good, it. I was thinking there was another metal detector out oh, there, yeah, but he's a water meter. Water meter reader. You know how I broke it down. I said, look, <clears throat> if we were the Chicago Bulls, me, you, and Mr. Murray mm-hmm. the, of the 90s. Well, we would need five, Joe. Well, I'm just saying. Okay. We only got three of us. Mr. Well, really, Murray, that team only had three people anyway that mattered. Well, Mr. Murray is Jordan. I mean, he's the star. Yeah, he's yeah he knows out. everything. That, like, if you find, like, a piece of – a brass like a handle he'll say oh that came off of a 1949 teapot from you know kalamazoo no, I'm and he's not. been doing it for 50 he says he said on the I interview yesterday 30, 1970 something okay. like that yeah. so go ahead i didn't mean to and then i said jace is like horse grant it's a good player horse grant horse, horse grant, grant. He was not. A I'm bad saying player. like he was good. I you're, was kind of thinking you were going to say Scotty Pippen. Pippen. You're like, not the top. No. <laughs> I said I'm, I'm Dennis Rodman. I think I work hard. I'm not a great shooter. Yeah, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm learning. But, hey, this is how I ended it. In about a year, I'm going to be Pippen. Oh, uh, so mm-hmm. he's saying you ain't Pippen yet, and he's going to get to Pippen before you get he's to Pippen. Right. You might be. He's actually right because Murray is like. A professional. So actually, yeah. Murray is Jordan and Pippen. Pretty right much, now, yeah. he's carrying the team. He's yes, carrying the team. Because look, he has the maps. Yeah. So what you do is you find And he it. knows all the, pla- the old places. Stuff, well, right? he's already got access. He's real good with so Because he used to be a farmer. Well, a lot of the places we go are farms. Because they're old homesteads. So yeah. Have and he likes, places. you know, more of the relics and, and things from, you know, World War One and, you know, the Civil War type stuff. And... But you just find all this stuff, and then you figure out what you got. Now, yesterday, we were out there because we were like, well, let's look at my place, which I've looked a 100 times. And Jeff found an Indian head penny. I found uh, a World War I button. Now, you, you just think, I thought I had found everything out there. Yeah. And, and I found uh, a 1919 yep. penny in good shape. But then Jeff found this, and this he, awesome. he brought it. This is a gold, what's it called? Gilded. Gilded, go, gilded gold button from England. It has some writing on the back. And Jeff just found this out this morning. What is but, that? What year does it date back to? 1830s. 1830s when they made these buttons. Wow. Huh. Where's of course, he what? found it in my yard. So now I'm like, Uh-oh. well, what do, do you, I was. I offered him a Yeti ice, <laughs> I traded him, I said, I'll give you a Yeti ice. Your yard in the subdivision? 
No, no Phil. This is at, the old place. At, at the old place at the, <laughs> the Logtown. You know the Logtown, the one right out oh, here. Oh, I got you. Where we have guests who come, which was got weird yesterday because we're filming. Got really weird. We're metal detecting. Then we had some guests show up because they booked online because you can stay at our place. It's a, like, like a, a bed, bed and breakfast. breakfast. So they pulled up, and they're like, hey, we didn't know y'all were going to be here. I was like, yeah, So that's... when was that house built? 1798. They got they the started, land they started, in 1798, right. but it's rumored. It like and we'll years. show you this, but uh, and he cleaned it up really, really well. But it's an England, it's from England, gold gilded button that we think may be worn on a So mil- would that have uniform? possibly come off a... A Brit who was caught up in the revolution and then met his fate, and the guy. <laughs> he made so this is a button. Oh, no. I just tell that dad's no. got a whole backstory already. I think this guy was from <laughs> France, the person who owned the land. And I'm sure, because I've found a lot of stuff from Paris and from, from England, you know, and that's the coolest thing from. Well, I did find something off a French uniform that had a gold nugget on it. And uh, so, I mean, I found a lot of cool stuff. That That's really cool. And we found that yesterday. Well, we're, you know, it's that finding something like that to me is priceless and awesome because it's, I mean, you look at it, it's beautiful. I mean, you cleaned it up. It's been in the ground almost 200 years. Yeah, going on too. And uh, it shows you gold holds up real well. Yeah, we talked about gold. Let's, let's take a quick break. So we got a new uh, sponsor of the podcast, and um, man, I wish this had been around <laughs> when I was younger. Lisa and I have not always been the best at uh, economics, and you well, know, I, t- I told you why. You have a condition. You don't want you don't want to die with money. That's true. You you spend it. I, and I so spend sometimes it. you I, make some, your mother has that disease. Oh, I know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a disease. <laughs> People like this come along because they try to help your credit score right. when you're trying to get some money. Right. You know, you or buy a house, right? Yeah, buy our house. And if you got a poor credit score, they look down and yeah. go. So I had out. a lot of poor credit scores through the years. Yeah. And probably you 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 didn't know it, Dad, but you probably did too. So there's a there's a company, it's a scoremaster.com. And basically, uh, they can get your credit score raised uh, quickly, which is really good because you want that to be high when you need to, you know, get a loan or you have something going on that you need to, you know, buy a car, refinance, whatever. Um, and look, it's not just a couple of points; sixty-one points um, in twenty days. So this goes way up to really help you. So um, basically, that puts you in control of your credit score. Um, you do it quickly. And so this will help you with your loans and things you're trying to do. You can enroll in just a few minutes. Uh, it's pretty easy and pretty quick. So if you want to check these guys out, if you're getting ready to buy a home or a boat or a car or something like that, scoremaster.com slash fill. Scoremaster.com slash fill and get your credit score up quickly. Well, what I told them is I wanted to apply the spiritual principles and, and look, I told you that one story in Luke 15, but you remember when the, the issue came up about taxes? And he said, he told Peter, after he read his mind, you know, the conversation, he said, go down there and the first, go fishing, and the first fish you'll catch will have two coins in it, in his mouth, and you go give that for your taxes and mine. But once again, here's the creator of the universe. He knows that's fun. Can you imagine going down there and catching a fish and it's got two coins in it? It's just so that's why I gravitated toward it because I saw these examples and I told him I said I would I would like to have some spiritual applications even on the show about it because yeah. you meet a lot of people and a lot especially in our culture now they're battling so much with history but you know history tells us a lot of things we learn from our mistakes yeah. and. And it's just it is what it is. You can't change it. You can only change your your past in Jesus. And you shouldn't try to erase it because it's how you learn to grow and to get better. It's really interesting because like we look at the Bible and we go all the way back to the beginning of humankind, all the way through the Old Testament. Well, you talk about flawed people. 
Yeah. I mean, that are that were the forefathers of our faith, and yet that's how we learn. I mean, we look at their situation and we look at the history. I would never want to erase that. We don't want to talk about those. Well, it's, it's like I told Zach. He's like, you know, I don't know about you know talking about the Civil War stuff. And I was like, look, the first time I found a Civil Civil War bullet, I thought, well, this is cool. And then I thought, this is kind of depressing. Yeah, you know, it, it that made, may have fallen out of some man. I mean, well, you know. well, it made it real to me. I'm like, at one time in our culture, we were shooting at each other, lined up across a field. Yeah, over what we're going to do with you know a group of people because their skin color was different. That's pretty sad. Yeah, and uh, so it reminds you, especially when you get to in Jesus, where there's true equality. There's no races. We're all about, under the umbrella of Jesus made in the image of God. I mean, it, it's it's a great application. Since you're there, Jace, uh, by setting forth the true planets that we've announced in the same way, this is Second Corinthians 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those. So he's talking about the gospel. He says the gospel, to your boy's credit, we have, if you have the gospel in your heart, this treasure— which these guys are treasure hunters. Oh, I like it. He uh, compares the gospel to treasure in jars of clay. They're, they're, they're within us to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Yeah. So a lot of people say, well, if I could just see God, I said, just watch his people and you'll see him. And his, and that's his, how you. That's how you spot him. And his point was that the treasure, cool. the treasure is so special and the jar of clay, which is us, is the flawed part. Yep. You know, imagine you're yep. making a pot, and you know it's not perfect because you're just trying. It's utilitarian, and then in that is this great gift from God, which yep. makes it even better to me. You think that shows that through those cracks we have, and you don't have like HS written on your your forehead, Holy Spirit, because He's in your heart. That's right. And when people watch your behavior. And the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, with generous self-control coming out of a person, you're like, man, they ought to be mad, but they're not. Yeah, They ought to be sad, but they don't seem to be. They seem to be happy, full of joy. How do how, how, how you get there? I did a sermon on that text one time, Dan. It was called uh, Crackpots. And, you know, you, the word crackpot, you think about it, some crazy person. Oh, yeah. But I was like, we are the crackpots. You know, yep. I mean, that's God used that and he used this flawed good people, point. you know, which is a good pretty good point. point of that, too. So, Jeff, tell me <clears throat> for another thing on the treasure hunting, you, uh, River, uh, your son has gotten into it, right? So, I mean, yeah. this is something you guys do together. Oh, he likes that? Yeah. And uh, originally, that's how you got in. Yeah, we were getting River a metal detector for Christmas. And uh, he thought it was ja- uh, it was cool all the stuff Jace had found, and he was like, "I want to find treasure." I mean, what little kid doesn't want to go dig for treasure? It's right, like the right. perfect. And uh, and me going out there with him and us finding a few. I mean, like literally not nice things, just pennies from the eighties. We're like, "Whoa, we're jumping up and down." So uh, <laughs> he does, you know, he it, you got to be super patient doing it. So after about an hour and a half, he starts getting bored, <laughs> yeah. but. Uh, just he like any like kid, it. yeah. Yeah. But I thought that was cool. There's something you can do with your son. I mean, you know, yeah. because there's not a lot of things that this that day and age the teenage boys like to do with their dads. We ought to implement that in all in the American culture from one end to the other. Spend well, a little time with your boy. I don't care what you're doing. Well, it's kind of like you always taught us, Dad. When we grew up in the woods and hunting and all that. It was like. If you're in a duck blind or you're a deer stand, or in this case, if you're out searching a field somewhere, I mean, there's a lot of things you're not doing that are By probably the way, not good. there's three of you here. The only one that's missing is Willie and and Phyllis. And Phyllis. But Phyllis is a really a godly woman. Willie's preaching the gospel, head of the evangelism part of the church he's at. And you three, it is pretty cool looking back at uh, the ones I sired. <laughs> uh, I'll put it that way. My own children, How do you and feel they're, about all, being sired? they're all. They're all. Makes me that feel word. a little <laughs> nauseous. Yeah. I just yeah. like I feel made like it. A race let's just now. leave it. <laughs> I'm made just in saying. The image of sired. God. If you would allow me to, I would say <laughs> that I'm pretty proud of y'all. That all, all of you, the entire bunch, is doing the work of God. Al. That's right. I mean, what the odds against that? Well, look, you're right, and and Jeff and I, we've we've talked about this before on the podcast. We were both. Uh, we spent a little. A little time out of the camp, kind of like the prodigal yep. son from first uh, from Luke yep. fifteen. But 
when you have a place to go home to, so which I always tell families now, you know, they'll have a prodigal. And I say, look, you put it in them. Just be patient. Pray for them that the, the evil one doesn't, you know, yep. hurt them beyond, you know, being able to come back. But just provide a place they can come back to. Because when I came back home, Jeff came back home, literally to this house, this place. Mm-hmm. But we came back to faith because the seed was planted in us. And so I always tell people, be patient. I, look, I know it hurts and it stinks. I can only imagine everybody worried about me or worried about we were all worried about Jeff. So, but you gotta, you gotta still just say we get, you know, that's how we're all adults now. We all love Christ. We we're fortunate. We're all married to the same woman, uh, and now we all have adult children except for Jeb, which he's almost got one. Yeah, Lily will be eighteen in December. So I would December. say if you're going to spend your time doing something that's uh, fun and can be productive, uh, I'm saying the more I, you know, I would never. And, I'd probably do it, but I would just say a man. That's good for you. Uh, a man good going people. out there uh, and whoa, yeah. You know, a man, look at the rain. A man going out there hunting for treasure, Jeff, just like you and uh, you and Jace. I would say that's a good way to spend your time. Right. You well, know what I'm it's, saying? it's legal. It there's nothing you know no. bad that's gonna I mean, happen. We were talking about Murray though. Murray has a. Uh, you know, he's just fallen in love with Jesus and and through the years. And it's like, we'll stop, meet, lunch. Because Murray, Jeff and I like to just go, you know, when I'm out there, boom, we just attack. Yep. But when you get up in years, because Murray's your yeah, age. Yeah, Murray's your age. He's like short bursts, you know. And he likes sitting up under a tree talking about, you know, stories. The pontificating. Yeah, but he, he just, <laughs> Glory he, he has a, a way about when he prays, it's just... It's almost kind of moving, you know. Yes, it's just so. real uh, authentic er, and, and authentic, real yeah. and heartfelt. And uh, you know, he's we we documented that he's he was diagnosed with cancer and he's battled through all that. And every time he was healthy enough to come metal detecting, because his family was saying, "Don't go." I mean, you don't need to do that. And he's like, "Hey, that's what's keeping me alive." I need a break. I need to go out there and break a sweat and do it. And uh, so I felt that's what really got me into it because when he called and asked me, I just like, yeah, because I knew I'm like, man, you know, he may not have long left. We're going to go enjoy this day, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of how we got got a bond. Let's take another break. you guys to an event, a live event we're going to do concerning Dad's book, Jesus Politics. Uh, we're going to have a, a on Talk Shop live channel uh, in Dad's name. We're going to have a live event. We're going to talk about the book, Dad, and talk about uh, kind of what inspired you to write it. Uh, I'm sure we'll tell a few stories uh, along the way, which I think will be really good. We're going to do it on Wednesday, July the 8th, uh, at 6 p.m. Central. Dad's book releases on August the 4th. But on this July 8th, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central, um, you know, we're just going to have a good time. Uh, you can win a free, uh, possibly a free copy of the book, a signed copy. Um, you can uh, pre-order the book. We'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, I don't know, Dad. What would you, how would you sum up uh, Jesus' politics in, in one sentence? Well, size? the great thing about Jesus' politics, Al, is it has eternity tied to it. So in those kind of politics that promises immortality, I tend to get a little excited when I... Now, I can play those politics with the best of them. <laughs> That's good politics. So Wednesday, July 8th, 6 p.m. Central. We're going to have a live chat. Dad and I are going to be there telling some stories. We'll tell you how you can pre-order the book. A few of you will actually win a book, so uh, check it out. You don't want to miss it. Go ahead, Jim. No, I was just going to say his prayer, It was so. it was moving to me because he was so thankful to God for letting us find these things and learn more about them. And it yeah. was just, it was beautiful. It was very moving. Yeah, I we, was like, we do it every up. time. Yeah. And which is, which is good. Which, but which by the way, so you talked about, we're talking about potential show of y'all doing this as a show. And we talked about the dynasty, like a lot of the spiritual stuff didn't make it, but it's interesting that because of the prayer and because of some other things about our lives, it still came across to millions of people. As a right. as a spiritual quality show, what one they could you know. there tell- was an old house where this structure is now, Jace. I've already looked here. I did find a silver ring. You found a ring? 
Yeah, Silver Ring. And Jep lived here for a while, so I showed him and said, but that's all I found because what happened was when they this house burned, the one that was here, when they put the new one here, they put too much dirt. Well, I mean, too much, but I mean, it covered, it covered up deep. everything. It's right. too deep. And plus, you know. There was an old cool. man and woman. The Clores lived here. I remember yeah. that. And this was we used to think this, the house was on It wasn't even paved at that time. It was oh, yeah. It was well, at some break. point, she lost her silver ring, and I found it's a spectacular There were ring. a good old couple. Yeah, I remember the them. So the I have their, their ring, but I wanted to read this because I think this is, in my mind, the theme of any show. It's the theme of my life. I mean, I try whatever I'm doing. I try to use it as a platform for Jesus. And so if we want to do a metal detection show, okay, we'll do it. But I like this verse. Matthew 13, 44 says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Which kind of corresponds with the, the second the uh, second Corinthian text treasure. It's pretty radical. Yeah, but and the the point is when you when Jesus finds you, I mean, basically you thought you were looking for Jesus, but he was looking for you. You know, Luke fifteen. Uh, you, that's what you do is you you basically sell the whole. So are you, you know, f- are you familiar with this story from Colorado within the last week where, like, a billionaire had like stashed millions of dollars worth of coins someplace. And so the treasure hunters have been looking for it. Cause I guess he's yeah. gone and they finally, somebody finally found it this last week. Like, really? Oh yeah. It was like the white way. When you were early on, you were talking about that, that one big stash that's out there. Well, that actually happened. I mentioned this before, but 20 miles South of us around Columbia down there, a guy was mowing his backyard and the tractor tire just kawoom hit in a hole he had to get another tractor and get it out. He said, what in the world? I didn't know that was there. It was big timbers, and he had run across these timbers. It was the roof of a wooden box buried in the ground, uh-huh. cypress. Cypress lasts a long time. <laughs> Dating back to the Civil War. <laughs> and look, he looked down in there, and he said, what in the world is that? So he gets the ladder and he gets down in there, just a hole in the ground, but it's got timbers there. A complete setting of dishes, Civil Civil War era dishes, like little cups and plates and little pouring, you know, little, <laughs> where you put your coffee. It's a complete setting. And these people, cup. they said that dated back to the Civil War and they had hidden those to, that woman probably said, you know, I'm gonna, if, if the Yankees come through here, I'm going to hide this. <laughs> right. So she hid that complete, it was a complete set. Knives, spoons, forks, plates, had them on that hole in the ground. He busted through it. And got them. And, and that's now all there was? Now it's either in LSU or one of those museums. Well, they put it in a museum. In that's a cool. museum. Hmm. So does would a lot of stuff like, would you would stuff you find? Would you put in museums, or do you just what do you do with this? Depending well, on what it was, maybe. I mean, I found the big canoe over there that whole thirty Indians over here on Red River. Uh, my cousins found mm-hmm. it. They just saw it, the snout of it sticking out of the a cave in on the river Red bank. River, yeah. And they they came by and they said that looked like a end of a boat, a pirogue. Well, they thought it was just some little wooden pirogue, but what it was was a bull cypress about 60 feet long that the Indians had cut down, honed it down on the front. We're talking stone tools had a front on it, and and they had burned out the interior of the log, slow burn. That's how they got it out. Yeah, and so you they probably look rough when they come out of it. But (laughs) they said it would hold about 30 Indians. I mean, it was a— Number it, there's been five of them found on the North American continent. That was one of them. Just well, stick, like a piro, right there. At Dixie, it's like a boat, right there. Dixie where I was raised. Yeah, it was just well, jutting I mean, out of the where the bank caved off, and they got a barge with a big high velocity hose. Everybody, when the archaeologists got a hold of it, they'd get up. Everybody get back. I mean, you know, it was, <laughs> so they took the thing, and now it's at it. I think it's they, they said LSU. That's pretty. Cool. I mean, Arche- if you find. What we generally do is if you're hunting somebody else's place and you find some relic that's attached to the place personally, you offer to give it to them because 
it's their place, and even though you found it, and you keep stuff that like coins or that's not really worth. So there's uh-huh. sort of unwritten rules I mean, that, about kind of how you do these things. That's kind of the way you do it. Yeah. Because you got to remember, the people living there, they're not going to find this stuff without your skill set. So Never. No, they're not going to find it. So And most people don't care. But that's generally what we do. Like like we were at a – Murray and I were at a field uh, the last time we went together. Well, the owner of the field, who Mur- Murray had never met, he had got permission – like via a third party. We had never made it. So he pulled up and the guy was like, you know, what are y'all doing out here? Murray's like, I got permission, you know, to hunt out here. He's like, I own this field. You know, Uh-oh. <laughs> like, well, I must've got permission <clears throat> from you then. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, Oh yeah, I remember that now, you know, but, uh, but then Murray basically is like, look what we found. And he offered, you know, his field. He's like, you see anything in here you like? And he's like, no, you keep that stuff, you know, but he didn't care. But uh, I, I, that's generally what you do, you know. I mean, you're not really – unless you're on some kind of uh, like an old – like my place or, you know, there's – or like some historical thing. But most thing where a war happened or whatever, the government moved in, they won't let you hunt it, which I don't agree with. I think they're just like leaving it in the ground. While you're there at the gate you've been talking about on our property over there, uh, we'll find that home place. But out in that field – uh, of Wendell's field, yeah. that you'll go out there and there's about six pecan trees in that field over there. Mm. I've already looked at the map. You, did you realize there were 17 houses along that river? Seven, well, 17. I didn't know there were 17, but I yeah. knew there were old home places there. I've already talked to Wendell. I was like, hey. And so he's like, well, I, I tried it, and I didn't find anything. I said, well, look, a metal detector is only as good as the man behind it. <laughs> and he hesitated, and he said, what are you trying to say? I said, <laughs> you're not a very good metal detector. If there was 17 houses there and you didn't find anything. It's not that there wasn't anything there. <laughs> you maybe, need to change your settings. Maybe it's you. Let's uh, take one last break. So, so Jeff and I are remaining time. Uh, I want you to tell us a little bit about what you're doing. We talked about one time when you called in. Um, cause you, you left, uh, to go to Austin to do a food truck, which you did, which was successful, but also you found out in the restaurant business, that's, uh, oh, that that's a, a lot of work, <laughs> man. My hat's off to everybody. Who's in the food <laughs> but then business. the coronavirus hit anyway. Yeah, so it worked it out good. Right. Exactly right. I would not have, uh, dealt with that very well. Yeah. So, so tell us about the group you're doing now, which is a great, great group. Yeah. And I definitely want to say thank you. Um, so it's all God's children international. And, you know, I briefly talked about it last time and I was like, y'all go look it up, you know, our website. And, uh, we had several donations from the podcast. People awesome. listen, listen. Hey, so unashamed that, nation or, that's know. why we're appealing. If y'all don't want us to do this show, well, I will call this immediately. <laughs> That's but how much we'll, we trust you. We'll guys. put a graphic, uh, Zach, and I haven't okayed this with Zach, but I don't care because I think it'll be fun. <laughs> you you just hound him about what you think we should do. Can we put that up? We'll put yeah, it we up. Will. We'll put and, it on and, there. And you send all Connor's your concerns put it up for us. Yeah. and whether you think it'll work, and we'll take a, a poll, a vote. And I say what? What's the number we need? We need seventy five percent support, man. Yeah, you got to get like a three quarters. Yeah, you if don't, three it's quarters not, it's of fifty one forty nine says says come back on TV, it'll be me, Jeff, and Murray. Murray, and you'll like Murray. He he's a he can tell you a really good story. Then we'll do it. All right, I like all right, it. go ahead, so, Joe. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I was just going to mention, uh, and I I think that's what I talked about last time is we have a COVID relief you know, emergency relief fund, we are at the tail end. I think we have like 15% left. If anybody's listening and wants to know more, check us out. All God's, all God's children.org. Well, they can put it up there. They'll put yeah. It. And, but uh, if you're listening. Yeah. It, and we're, so. you know, I think we're doing the Lord's work. We're ha- helping orphans all over the world and getting them over abuse. And, and ultimately we want them to find Jesus. So, and I, I love to, the name, that, all God's children. I do too. I went to a, a fundraiser that Jeff and another guy were in charge of. And I was proud of you, Jeb. You were 
I mean, I know you're not crazy about being in front no, of groups so of people. Nervous, yeah, so but nervous. he handled it. He was working the room, and he was just like one of the Tebow's guys, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was really good. And we, and we, you guys raised what a hundred thousand dollars that night, or something, or oh no, like four fifty. Well, there you go. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, which was awesome. So I always like that. Also, on our set today. Uh, a friend of mine, Lance, uh, who's visiting, and he, he works with a group called ADF, which is Alliance Defending Freedom. And any of you that have been following any of these religious liberty cases, these are the lawyers that donate their time to defend. You have to have them. you got to have them. I mean, you know what's amazed me, Dad? When I, so Lance invited me to a kind of their gathering. They call it the summit, and I, and I was able to go and meet some of these folks. And I always thought, you know, oh, lawyers are the problem, you know, because you see all these – congressmen and lobbyists that are lawyers and just so much stuff is bad but i'm running up on these guys and i was like i'm gonna quit doing lawyer jokes because these guys are the real deal i mean they're putting their time and donate their time to be able to help people and the guys that you know was founded by james dobson and bill bright i mean some of the great spiritual you know forefathers of our country and so they knew even back in the 80s when they started or whenever it started that there would be a time where the people of God would have to have the courts to be able, because they'll try to weed us out otherwise, and that's what that's what happened. That's Even a one sad is commentary on well, our you country. You need to go by my rule. Well, I can help you with this. All right, good. If Jesus is your lawyer, yeah. then I'll let you in the door if you're a lawyer. <laughs> So that's I say, good. they so say, I'm a lawyer. Jesus. Well, First John 2, 1, that's yeah. where I'm getting that. Okay. You know, if anybody sins, we have one who speaks on our defense. That's right. He's basically, he's the only defense lawyer I actually trust. <laughs> and he's a prosecutor because he says he'll judge all things. So he's yeah. actually both. Okay. Yeah. Well, only a pastor would come up with that. Well, that's but right. <laughs> you may be right. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> so he's also I say, a judge, okay, so. you're a lawyer. They're like, yep. I was like, is Jesus your lawyer? It's a very good question. You ought to see them. Now, if they start, if they lose eye contact immediately, just end it right there. Because he, now he's nervous. So you're you, watching their eyes, Jay. Well, you ask them a question, you're a lawyer, they're all asking questions. That is the question that stops them in the That's track. That's pretty good. Is man. Jesus your lawyer? Guess what? They are ready to sweat. When that happens, <laughs> I like. I it. love it. it well, it's met, hard to make a lawyer nervous. I, I met, but if you ask them that question, guess what? They're they're now. Some of them say absolutely. I'm like, well, come on in, because you are the you are really the best case for God's grace. How right. how far it can reach? That's so right. I'm like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I met some Jesus lawyers for sure, and uh, they're great guys. Uh, they were nine in a row in the Supreme Court, and unfortunately, last week. Um, they lost on yeah, this man, crazy what a thing. Really with, got yeah, blessed. it was terrible. But so, 90%. They're, do, they're doing good work. 90%. They're doing God's work. So, anyway, check those guys out, ADF, because uh, they're always needing help. And then I'll, I'll close with a reminder. Uh, Jeff, I got one of these for you. Did I, awesome. Have you given you one yet? Nope. And uh, this is Jesus Politics, which is Dad's latest tome, uh, How to Win Back the Soul of America. And it's really kind of a continuation of the theft of America's soul, which is the one for this. But this one is dives deeper into kingdom thought process above, you know, some of the things we're dealing with in the country. So you can go to JesusPoliticsBook.com, and that's where you can pre-order a copy. And we'd love for you to do that because the more we get pre-ordered, the more it helps us ramp up when we finally get to do a little media about it because that'll be – on the airways, the, 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 Jesus being the greatest defense attorney of all times, that, that part, that little part's in there. Yeah, it is. He's never lost a case. That's right, and nor lost the people yeah. what we talked about from John. And he's Six. dealt with billions. Yeah, exactly. And how do you say that guy's name again? Because I think he was a lawyer. Gamaliel. Gamaliel, lawyer, yeah. and he was Pharisee. a lawyer. He was yeah. expert in the law. That's it. Well, law he had a really it. good philosophy. So, Jeff, it's always a pleasure to have you uh, on Thanks Unashamed. For me. Yeah, well, good and, work, Jeff. And we'll see how it works. We'll see what Unashamed says about uh, the treasure hunt. Yeah, so, it's up to y'all. Next time, I'm gonna tell you about my show. I guess since we're out there, uh, so I'll if t- they drop the axe show. on it, you're you're going to acquiesce. I, I told Zach I could care less. Well, look, if our audience doesn't care about it, our Unashamed audience, then it ain't gonna work. Forget anymore. it. That's right. I mean, I'm like I'm going metal detecting. <laughs> if they want to film it, it's up to them. <laughs> That's, That's fine. <laughs> they'll they'll pay me a nominal fee. If not, who oh, cares? We, we're gonna make some money. That's I'm no I'm going metal detected. Do you want to film it? Is it's your call. If we win the let's crowd, see. Let me get this right. His his resume. He's he's uh. Stop. He's on the podcast. Stop. He's uh, kind of like in 
His woman is a great singer, so he's kind of in the worship part. Mm -hmm. And then it's let's a, see what else is he? He's still? a stock. Uh, stock. Watching the stock market. He's a stock expert. Stock market. I'm now he's got a metal detector and, in his hand. And he's a treasure hunter. I'm thinking no, about Jace. I'm, I'm thinking. a metal detector and an investor. Y'all need to get the words right. <laughs> I nicknamed Jeff is him a treasure hunter. I nicknamed him Lone Wolf <laughs> McQuaid. <laughs> So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.